distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, a warm Jamaican welcome. In Rwanda, you say Murewejo, and in Jamaica, we say Wagwan. We are delighted to convene this very important government-to-government -government discussion entitled Think Jamaica 2022. I am Senator the Honorable Kamina Johnson-Smith, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade of Jamaica, and I am honored to be facilitating the discussion between our two brilliant leaders, Prime Minister Holness and President Kagame. President Kagame is a powerhouse of a president. He has presided over the strong socioeconomic development and advancement of Rwanda. Among his many roles, he has sat as chair of the African Union, the East African Community, and will shortly take the chair of the Commonwealth later this year. Considered one of the pearls of Africa, Rwanda is one of the continent's fastest growing economies. Under the clear and visionary leadership of President Kagame, this land of 1,000 hills has secured many milestones of environmental protection, innovation, and development. And we celebrate another particular milestone, Rwanda's achievement of the highest level of female parliamentary representation in the world. <laughs> Mr. President, welcome. <laughs> prime Minister Andrew Holness is the first Jamaican Prime Minister to be born after independence and indeed the youngest. He has had several achievements as Prime Minister, notably leading the resurgence of the Jamaican economy ahead of the COVID-19 pandemic and the fastest recovery in the region since. He's launched the most extensive infrastructure projects in Jamaica's history, highest investment in national security, and achieved the lowest unemployment rate ever. He has a passion for the environment, having sat as co-chair of the UN Secretary General's Climate Financing Initiative, and having implemented the most extensive environmental protection measures ever in Jamaica, including declaration of the boundaries of Jamaica's cockpit country as a protected area. Mr. Prime Minister, welcome. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this visit is of special significance as it takes place during Jamaica's Diamond Jubilee, our 60th year of independence, and it represents an important opportunity for the deepening of bilateral relationships between Jamaica and Rwanda. It also reinforces the steadily burgeoning relationship between the Caribbean and the African continent, including between CARICOM and the AU. On the matter of the connection and future role of the relationship between the African continent and the Caribbean. You have spoken of this and its potential. What are some of the things, the actions we can take in order to enhance the deepening of this connection? The Caribbean and Africa have a lot in common, uh, beginning with the people. Uh, there is that deep connection uh, that uh, the geographical distance can't uh, eliminate. So the first thing we have to do is create that environment and the possibility for people to travel, you know, Caribbean, say to Rwanda and East Africa or other parts of Africa and vice versa. So we have to deal with uh, visa issues and make sure that we create waivers and so that we really encourage uh, this connection knowing that uh, we have interest in one another, we, we can benefit one another, there is a lot we can do, whether it is trade or different things, uh, and, but we have to be very practical, start with the right first things first, which is first even to carry the message to people and say, why not, why not connect uh, as close as we can. Uh, so I think these are the practical things we have to do. Absolutely, sir. Air services arrangements, visa connections, people-to-people -people exchanges, these are critical to deepening. Thank you, sir. Mr. Prime Minister, uh, what would you say are perhaps the most important development, uh, developmental lessons that Jamaica and even perhaps Rwanda uh, have learned over the past 10 years as you've been doing some research and how can these be applied to other countries to increase growth and equity? A very important question. I think, uh, uh, Mr. President, again, thank you for visiting our country in our 60th year. And I'm sure you would have felt the warmth of the Jamaican people. Rwanda is a perfect example of a country that has overcome 
challenges and struggles. And uh, they have done so remaining united. Uh, and I think that if you were to say what would be the lessons, it would be first of all resolving conflict. So a process of reconciliation. In every society, there will be divisions. There will be conflicts. There will be uh, difficult issues. But the process of bringing everyone together in the society to resolve conflict and get the society singularly focused on development, I think that is a lesson for all countries. The other lesson is to be pragmatic. And I think if you were to describe President Kagame, you would say that he is pragmatic, he is instrumental, and he is deliberate in thought and action. Uh, and so leadership would be a, a very important part of any development of, of um, especially small countries. Uh, leadership is so critical. But flowing from that leadership that is pragmatic is also an ethos of performance based. And I think that is something that the Caribbean, the region, Jamaica needs to adopt. Thank you, Prime Minister. So conflict resolution, focused leadership, measurable outcomes, and performance based management are sort of touch points for ensuring that a vision can be implemented. Thank you both very much.